Welcome back to P4. Today we are looking at rates of change and this is unit 5.3. Now you can use the chain rule to connect rates of change where you've got multiple variables and an equation that involves a rate of change is called a differential equation. So if in a question I had say a dA by dt equals something and then I also had a dR by dt then you can look here and you can see that I have a dt and a dt but then I have a dA and a dR which is different so then I need something in terms of dA and dR and now you can see that I've got three different variables and three different sets. So you've got DRs, DTs, and a pair of DAs. And then these can all be linked together. So, for example, the DA by DT would be the same as a DA by DR multiplied by a DR by DT, which would obviously be this one flipped around the yeah. Okay, and you can see these would cancel, leaving me dA by dt. So that's just an example, a very quick example of what we're talking about, but I think it makes way more sense if we do it with an actual question. So let's do that now. Okay, let's have a look at this example. The radius of a circle is increasing at a constant rate of 5 centimetres per second. Okay, so this one means it's going to be dr by dt and that's 5 okay we're talking about the radius which was the centimeters and it's per second centimeters per second is centimeters divided by time or a distance divided by time which is our radius and seconds so radius and time now, as I continue into the second sentence, find the rate at which the area is increasing. So the rate in which the area increases is going to be our dA by dt. And that's what we're trying to find here. So we've got two things here. What we want to find, which is our dA by dt, and we've got dr by dt. That means what we need, we've already got the dt, but we've got to get rid of the dr, and we need a dA. So we need dA by dr. This is the one we need. Now, look at the question and think about how we can get that. That means that we needed something that was in terms of a and r. So that would be the area of the circle area equals pi r squared and differentiating this will give me dA by dr so dA by dr is 2 pi r now we can fill this in so dr by dt we know is 5 dA by dr is 2 pi r therefore our answer for dA by dt is 10 pi r And by answer, I should really say that's the expression because there is one more step that we need to do. We need to find the value when the radius is 3. So we want to go when r equals 3, dA by dt is 10 pi times 3, which is 30 pi. Okay, second example. It's quite a long one. But let's get into it. So you can clearly see we've got a triangular prism. The triangle themselves, that is an equilateral triangle, that cross section. So that will make our lives a bit easier with this. Um, next, so that's there. we've also got 120 centimetres for our length. H is the height of the water, which we don't know. Water is poured into the container at a rate of 24 centimetres per second. So 
the water's been poured in. 24 centimeters cubed is going to be a volume. And seconds, obviously, a time. So we've got a dv by dt equals 24. So first bit of information. Show that the water in a container, v cubed, is given by this formula, where h is some height of the water in the container. So we need to find the volume of the container in terms of h. And to do that, we need to be, it needs to be the area of the cross section times the length as it's a prism. So let's start off by thinking of the cross section. So if we think of the cross section, we've got a triangle, that's right angle, and there's the height. Okay, now within our triangle, we know that it's gonna be 60 degrees because it's equilateral. So let's go ahead and work out the length of one side of the triangle. So I'm going to use that as x. So if I think about this, it's going to be sine 60 is opposite over the hypotenuse. Sine 60 is root 3 over 2. And therefore x is going to be 2h over root 3. And then don't forget to rationalize this. So we get 2 root 3 over 3h. And that's the length of any one side within my triangle. Now the area of the triangle is a half times base times height. So we've got a half times the base is just the length of one side as they're all the same, times the height. So you can see now our twos are going to cancel. So we get root 3 over 3 h squared. Now, if I think about the volume, the volume is area of area of cross section times length. So we've got the area, which is root 3 over 3 h squared and the length is 120. Now, 120 divided by 3 is 40, so we get 40 root 3 h squared. And that is exactly what we needed to find. So that's our first part done. So, looking at B, we need to find the rate of change of h when h is 12. Rate of change of h is going to be a dh by dt. So you can see we've got a dv by dt. And we need to get rid of the dv. And then we're going to need a dh. And that way then they match up. The dv's cancel, leave me dh by dt. So the dh by dv will come from this. So we need to differentiate this. So dv by dh, looking at at root 3h. Now we actually want dh over dv, don't we? So we want 1 over this value. So I get 24 times 1 over um, at root 3 times 12. So that gives me 24 over 960 root 3. And that as a final answer will give me root 3 over 120. And since h is a height, it should be obvious that this will then be centimeters per second or centimetres per second, written like that.